Today I want to experiment with a technology that I have never used before. And the technology is Wacon LAN, or WOL for short. With this technology you are supposed to be able to switch on your PC even though it is in sleep or powered off. As the name implies, for WOL to work you need a network card. You could use a network expansion card like you see here on my table, or you could use a built-in network interface if you have a more modern board. However, today I'm going to try this on a slot 1 machine, which doesn't have a network interface on board, and it is a Pentium 2 333 on an Intel board. We will see how far we get today, because Wacon LAN was quite a new technology when slot 1 was around. By the way, this technology was a collaboration between AMD and Hewlett Packard. Wacon LAN was conceptualized in 1994 and widely adopted in 1996. So Wacon LAN really became popular with late socket 7 motherboards or super socket 7 motherboards and around the time when all the cartridge CPUs entered the market. We are talking about the Pentium 2 from Intel and the classic Athlon from AMD. So today we are going to figure out how this technology works. We will set up a test system and then we will dig a little bit deeper to figure out how this technology in its core works. And then we will come across a term called magic packet, which we are going to dissect and try to build one our own and send it across the network. When I started with this project, I came across a lot of different information and none of it made sense. But then at some point I found out that early on it wasn't possible to just power on your PC through a network interface. And that is why on some of those cards you have something like a 3-pin connector, like this one. This connector is necessary to signal to the motherboard to change its power state. For instance, if the PC is in sleep mode, the motherboard can be woken up by sending a signal from this network card to the motherboard to change its power state. As you can see, I have another card here, which also has a 3-pin connector. And here this 3COM also has a connector, it looks a little bit different. Unfortunately I don't have any of these original cables. So we have to try and botch something together. And then here is the last card that I have, but this one doesn't have a Wacom LAN connector. So Wacom LAN works as well as the drivers are written for the network cards how well the motherboard supports it, and of course any network related devices like a router, if it's configured correctly. So we have seen the connectors now on these cards, but let's quickly have a look at one of the motherboards that are waiting for repair and see the other side of the connector. So here is a Gigabyte GA5AX, which has some issues here on the ISA slot. I need to replace this. It has the famous ALI chipset. And yeah, there are a few cosmetic problems here as well. But if you look over the board, you will see between PCI slot 3 and 2. Let me turn it around that we can read it better. Here you can see JP5 Wake on LAN. And here is the counterpart of our connector we have seen on the network cards. And there is no magic to this connector. There is one 5 volt pin, the middle one is ground, and the other one is a signal pin. And the 5 volts are not the 5 volts that we are also using to power the CPUs in that era. It is the 5 volt standby power from the power supply. So you do need an ATX power supply that I think adheres to ATX specification 2.1 if I'm not mistaken. So why did I pick this board to show you? Well, it is because this is a socket 7 or a super socket 7 board. It has already an AGP slot. So you most likely can see Wacom LAN connectors on socket 7 boards and up. This board has a PCI revision of 2.1 and it is a little bit unclear to me what features of Wacom LAN are supported through the PCI slot, but with the next iteration, PCI specification 2.2, Wacom LAN is fully supported and you do no longer need this extra connector on the board. So what do you need for Wacom LAN to work? First you need two PCs with a network interface. This card will go into our slot 1 machine because it doesn't have an onboard network card. And you need a wired connection. 
at least for the PC that you want to wake up. It does not work over wireless. There were some PCs back then, like if Intel Centrino tells you something. This used a technology called Wake on Wireless LAN that was able to wake up through a wireless signal, I guess. But I have no idea how this works and I cannot show you this today. So we will need to have a wired connection to our retro PC. But I will send signals from my desktop machine, which is connected through wireless to a router, and the router is then forwarding the packets to our retro machine. So I will install this network card now, and then we will jump into the BIOS and Windows 98 and configure everything that is necessary to use Wake on LAN. With Wake on LAN being such a new technology at that time, it is absolutely important that you update the BIOS on your retro machine because I ran into so much trouble before I updated to the latest version that was available for my board. I'm using an Intel SE440BX2 or a Seattle 2 motherboard. It came with a BIOS version P6 and I upgraded to P15. This was absolutely necessary because otherwise the system would freeze randomly or wake on LAN wouldn't work or in sleep mode the CPU fans kept running although the system was supposed to be off so there were a lot of issues that were resolved with the latest BIOS version that I updated to. By the way this BIOS that is here is also now on the retro web which wasn't before. But now let's jump into the BIOS and see what is required to make wake on LAN work. This is a PC from Micron Electronics. And here you can see the new BIOS, P15. And we are entering the setup. And usually what we will find on those boards and from that era, as you can see here on the right side, controls how the system responds to LAN wake-up events. So the problem is I tested this while doing research. This option seems to have no effect on my system powering on or not. And this is very unfortunate because I also could not power on the device when it was soft powered off. So when you shut down the system in Windows, it should enter power state 5 or S5. And what I understand is you should be able to recover the system with a LAN wake up event. That didn't work for me at all, even if I connect that cable that I showed you before the connectors for. But anyway, if your board has an onboard network port, you have to go into the BIOS and look for anything that looks like it's for Wake on LAN and enable it. Exactly like what I did here. And we will leave it like this for the entire test that I'm performing right now. I'm just letting you know that this doesn't make a difference in my particular case. This could be because Wake on LAN was very new at the time and it's not properly implemented on this board. Maybe the BIOS doesn't implement it properly. Or there is a problem with the ACPI implementation, the advanced configuration and power interface. So let's continue and boot into Windows. Okay, and we have the drive installation. And now we have to install our network card. I already have all the drivers on my system. And it will set up our network environment. Probably we have to restart one more time. Let's see. Yes. So this system is connected to my router in the living room. It will have its IP address assigned automatically. But I have to make sure that my local system is also in the same network. I want to first see if we have a connectivity between both systems. And then we can try to play around with our Wake on LAN experiment. Okay, our installation seems to be successful. We have the login prompt for our network environment. And let's see how our network neighborhood looks like. Okay, we have TCP IP and we have our network card here. So this looks all good. Before we can use Wake on LAN in Windows, we have to go to our device manager and go to our network adapter. Go to properties and look at power management. In here, we need to set a tick on allow this device to bring the computer out of standby. 
As I told you before, I cannot power on the system when it was shut down. In sleep mode, however, it works, or standby as it is mentioned here. So I believe this is something maybe Windows 98 has a limitation, the board has a limitation, the BIOS has a limitation, or even the network adapter or its drivers have a limitation. Now let's see what is our IP address on the system. For this, we can go to a command prompt and type in ipconfig. And we will see an IP address. This is coming from my router. It assigned IP address 99 in my local area network. So I should be able now to ping this machine from my desktop because I'm in the same network as well. And I obviously have a different IP address, but I should be able to ping 192.168.2.99. Okay, so here is my command prompt from my desktop PC right now. And I will try to ping our retro machine. Ping 192.168.2.99. Point Let's see if we get something back. And we get a reply from our retro machine. So it looks like we are connected. Now we need to understand how Wake on LAN is actually working. When the system is powered down or in sleep mode, you wouldn't necessarily expect that there is any type of activity going on on your network card. At least it doesn't have a leased IP address because obviously the network card or the computer is powered off. However, the IP address is not the only address the network card has. There is something called a MAC address. In this case, MAC is not something that Apple created. In this context, it's the Medium Access Control address. It consists of six binary octets, which usually are written in hexadecimal. For instance, six times the pair FF is a valid MAC address, and it is the representation of six times the number 255 in decimal notation. So we need to know the MAC address of our retro system. And we can find out the MAC address of our retro system by running a small tool that is part of Windows 98 called WinIP CFG. And here you have an option to pick all your network adapters. We have only one here, but we will see our least IP address. We see our subnet mask. We see the default gateway, but we can also see the MAC address, and in this case it is 0011954849. C8 We need this address to send the magic packet or the wake up signal to our retro system. And now let's try to wake up the system, but not by sending the magic packet directly ourselves. Let's use my router because it has a specific section in the web interface. So let's put this system to sleep. Shut down and standby. It's not even called sleep here, it's called standby. And this is exactly what we saw in the power management tab under the driver for our network adapter. And the system entered sleep mode. And here we are in the web interface of my router. And in here, you can already see that I have set up our test subject, our retro machine here, with the MAC address that we have seen before. Okay, so I had to move a few things around, but you can see now the blinking LED on the retro system, which means I'm in sleep mode. And you can see a screen capture on the bottom right corner right now. This is the screen capture of the graphics card of the retro system. But I'm still here in my browser and I can try to send a magic packet to our retro system to this MAC address, which is part of the network of my router. So let's try to add this address here in the target. And I should be able to wake up the retro system right now with the click on this button. So monitor the green blinking LED and the screen on the bottom right corner. In three, two, one, go. And the system is back alive. We sent a magic packet to our retro system and it woke up. But that wasn't much of a surprise because if I go again in sleep mode, so standby, 
you will see that the network card is still active. Even though you see the green LED blinking in the background, the network card is active and it is able to receive packages. So yeah, this was the first experiment trying to get a retro system out of sleep mode with a magic packet that was sent through my router. But now I'm talking about magic packets. So let's have a look what a magic packet is and maybe we can construct one ourselves. So the magic packet is a frame that is most often sent as a broadcast and that contains anywhere within its payload 6 bytes of all 255. So 6 bytes, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 bytes and FF is a hexadecimal representation of 255. So our packet should have 6 pairs of F in the payload and then followed by 16 repetitions of the target computer's 48-bit MAC address for a total of 102 bytes. The 48-bit MAC address is also consisting of 6 bytes and this is the string of hexadecimal characters that we have seen before. In our case it was 001195C88549. So this MAC address should appear 16 times after we get our 6 bytes of all Fs. So let's construct a magic packet in a programming language. I will choose C sharp for this. And let's see if we can awaken our retro system with a magic packet that we have created ourselves. I downloaded Visual Studio Community Edition, which is free of charge. So you can also download it and follow me along if you would like to. So here's the code, which I also will provide on my website at some point. But if you want to, you can already try and reprogram this if you would like to. But now what we need to do is we need to construct our magic packet. So we know from the Wikipedia article that we need to start off with six pairs of F. So I will go ahead and type these in here. So FF, I will use dashes to separate the pairs. It's just easier to read. No particular other reason for that. So this is our start of the frame. This is what we have seen. These are the six bytes of 255. We also know that we need 16 times the MAC address. So in total we have 17 entries in here. So let's change our array size here from 0 to 17. And now we need to add the MAC address of our target PC 16 times. So what did we have? We had 001195C88549. So let me try to type this. We had 001195C88549. And this is our MAC address of our target PC. And this we have to send 16 times in a row. So we have one already, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And our IDE is no longer complaining, so we matched the size of the array. Of course, you can write this in a completely different way. You don't have to write it out like this, but this is for demonstration purposes. This is what we are sending to our network adapter. This will be converted into binary numbers, of course, but this is the representation how a magic packet looks like in hexadecimal. This is uh, something we will see now on the screen. This is just a little bit of flow logic, but here is the actual method that sends our magic packet to our target PC. Now there is one more thing that we need to figure out, and this is the broadcast IP. The broadcast IP is required for the router to figure out to which computers it's going to send it to. And this involves a little bit of subnetting, that involves a little bit of understanding how IP addresses work. There is an article also on Wikipedia that is going to explain everything to you, but I thought maybe it's better to have an Excel sheet available that is able to determine the broadcast IP based on your IP address and subnet mask. 
So as you can see here, these two are inputs, the IP address that you're sending from and the subnet mask. Let me just enter the IP address of my desktop computer right now. You have to trust me on this one, but it is 192 and you will see things changing once we're entering the subnet mask. 168, two, 96. This is my IP address on my local PC, and you can see that this is the binary representation of my IP address. Next is the subnet mask, and my subnet mask is 255, 255, 255, 0. And we get a broadcast IP address of 192, 168, 2, 255. If we send a packet to this IP address, the router will send this packet to all computers that are part of that subnet. And the computer has to figure out what to do with this packet. So our broadcast IP is 192.168.2.255. This is the last bit of information that we have to enter here. So we have 192.168.2. 255. This is our broadcast IP. And now if we go ahead and we run this application. So here's our application now running. And I just need to press enter and it will send via UDP protocol our magic packet. So now we'll change again the screens. So let's send our magic packet with that small application we wrote, which we have seen our magic packet right here. Right here's our magic packet that we are sending right now over the network to our Pentium 2 system. So three, two, one, go. And our system is alive. So we successfully took our Pentium 2 system out of sleep mode. Unfortunately, this is all I could do so far. I cannot get the system powered on when I shut down the system. But let me show you something else before we wrap up the video. So when I power down the system, you will see that the LEDs on the network card turn off and that's it. There is no activity anymore and this network card can no longer receive any packets. And here comes the purpose of the three pin connectors on the network adapter card and the motherboard. You may have missed it, but I showed you the three pin connector on the motherboard as well. And the three pins have the five volt standby voltage. Then you have a ground pin in the middle. And then you have a signal pin that is used by the network adapter to notify the motherboard. Hey, I received a package. Please turn on. Unfortunately, this doesn't work. But what I can show you right now is if I plug in, I have here a simple Arduino cable. If I plug in this cable to the motherboard and also to the network card, you will see that these LEDs come back to life. So let me just hook up the five volt standby power. On this board, we have one pin which is closer to the CPU, which is the five volt standby power. So this purple wire now is connected to the motherboard five volt power supply, the standby power only. If I plug this into the connector here, you will see the network card comes back alive. If I would hook up the signal line as well, this should allow the system to come out of the power off state. Unfortunately, that doesn't work on this board, even though I enabled the option in the BIOS. I haven't tested another board. You have seen that the, the Gigabyte board needs some work first. I think this is something I should tackle very, very soon because I really want to see how this board works. But yeah, this is Wake on LAN and this is my first experience with it. Now, I'm curious if you have worked with Wake on LAN and if you have used it, what is your experience? Am I doing something wrong? By the way, I never connected the ground pin because I measured the ground pins on the motherboard and the network card. They're both connected already. So I don't think you need the ground pin. You only need these two signals. One is the five volt power supply and the other one is the signal wire. I just believe that 
this board doesn't implement the wake on LAN properly. And I guess this is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And the Excel sheet is on my website. You can download it from there if you want to calculate your own broadcast address. And otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you think about it and what is your experience with Wake on LAN. And finally, I also want to thank all my Patreons for your support. You are helping me that I can make these videos. Thank you so much. And now it's time for me to go and maybe fix this gigabyte board. So thank you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.